this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and this one is a garden update. It's currently October, end of the season, as you guys can see, things are going crazy here. Probably one of my best growing seasons yet, and I believe it's because of maybe a few things I'm doing a little bit differently this year than last year, and I'm doing uh, you know some trials. So that's what I want to show you guys in this episode. Uh, basically let you guys know that you know I always want to encourage you guys to try and experiment and do different things in your garden even if you've done the same thing for the last 50 years because you're older than I am you've been gardening even older more years than I am old <laughs> right and yeah, there's you could always try new stuff because just because you've done it a certain way for all these years doesn't mean there isn't a better way to do it and that's what I'm a continual continual learning and growing process to check out new different things I could add to my soil to see if I could even boost my growth, boost the quality of my food even better, and more importantly for me, boost the taste of the food. And some of the food that I've grown this year, like tomatoes and peppers, cucumbers, they're off the hook. It just like really reminds me, oh, and then, oh yeah, don't forget about figs and fajoas, or pineapple guavas that I've been eating today. Um, this has been my diet the last couple of days, just eating 99.9% .9 out of my garden. But yeah, the food you grow is amazing, and I always try to increase it and even make it better, even if you think you got good stuff. Anyways, let's head in my garden and show you guys what I want to show you today and how I'm really maximizing some of the genetic potential of some of my plants. So as we walk in, I want to show you guys these ones. This is known as the uh, Bolivian cucumbers, also known as the achicha. I'm currently harvesting more seeds for you guys. If you guys missed my episode on the best, most tolerant cucumber that grows like a weed episode, check it down below. I still do have the seeds available at growingyourgreens.ecwid.com if you guys wanna get some seeds. Yeah, this thing's grown like crazy. All right, welcome to my little jungle in the city. <laughs> Figs are going off like crazy, and I got all harvesting all kinds of stuff. My cucumbers done really well. It's getting kind of colder, so you guys can see some of the damage on the cucumbers right now. But the uh, the Bolivian cucumbers, no problem whatsoever. But the reason for this episode is I want to take you guys down and show you guys my uh, pepper bed over here. So this is my pepper bed. Look at look at like how many peppers are in there. Like this, these plants are like totally maxed out. Like I counted, I think over on one of these plants over here, there's like 12 peppers on one plant. They're all in different stages of ripening. You know, I like to leave my peppers on the plant, you know, until they're fully ripe and ready to eat. And of course, what is ripe to one person is maybe not ripe to another person. So I really like to get them nice and deep red. Let me see if I could find one that's really a deep color, right? So here's one that's like a deep, rich red color, right? The longer you keep the fruit on the plant, the more it'll ripen up, the deeper and the more intense the color. This is like some really bright red lipstick on a girl that's really nice and dark, right? As compared to this pepper right here, that's not quite ripe yet, right? The darker the color, the more color, the more vibrancy in the fruit, the higher the antioxidant level, which means the healthier it is for you to eat. In addition, some plants such as the plants or the fruits in the Solanaceae family, such as the tomato and the pepper, the eggplants and all these things, you know, have some uh, toxins in there. So like when you eat the green pepper, you kind of get that weird flavor that may be some toxins. So I want to make sure uh, these plants especially have really bright fruit for lower, uh, you know, negative attributes and better or more positive attributes. So the main thing that I want to show you guys here is like, if we come over here, and look at this plant right here. I mean, it is this plant is just loaded with peppers. Look at that. Have you ever seen a pepper plant like that loaded with peppers? It's totally amazing. And uh, if you guys have been watching me for any length of time, I'll post a link down below to a quick tour video I did a couple months ago. Maybe it was uh, filmed uh, two to three months ago now. And in that video, uh, right before the, I put the video up, or made the video actually, I added some nutrients to uh, this half of the pepper bed and this half of the pepper bed. I think the distinction line is maybe like right here, I put a little uh, green stake in. So this side got a brand new worm casting that I'm playing with for the first time. And this side got my standby worm casting that I've been you know, uh, talking about and using for many years now. 
and it's really cool when you do a side-by-side -side comparison to see the difference. So on this side, if you guys look, we'll do a pan shot of the uh, peppers on this side. So this is one half of the bed that I use with my uh, a brand new worm cast. And you guys can see like there's just so many peppers in here. It's like loaded right in here, all in here. So many ripe peppers. They're just like totally close together. Now I did plant these square foot garden style, like about uh, 12 inches, 11, 12 inches apart. And that's this half. Now let's go to this half over here. As you guys can see, some of these plants are a little bit, you know, more stunted, more smaller. All these are the same peppers, you know, uh, from plant starts at the same time. And some of these peppers have a lot less peppers on them. Like a lot less. Also too, like I want to show you guys this, like over on this side we got uh, some parsley growing. You can see how it looks. I mean, some of it looks pretty good. I planted parsley like on the ends. I really love parsley. Definitely one of the best uh, herbs you could eat. It's no longer a garnish. You should be eating it every day. And especially if you guys have bad breath or your significant other complains about your bad breath, eat some parsley. That'll help to uh, make your breath taste good. But let me go ahead and show you guys the parsley on this other side. Once again, this is the same bed. We had all the same starting soil. We have the same watering schedule for the whole thing. And on this side, check out this parsley. This parsley like overgrew my peppers here. You can see here's a pepper just underneath all the parsley, but this parsley is just like really taken off. I mean, here's peppers underneath the parsley. I didn't expect the parsley to get this big. This is some of the biggest and more importantly, tastiest parsley I've ever had. The parsley is actually, it, it like tastes, it has a sweetness. I'm not going to say like, I'd say it's sweeter than a Granny Smith apple. And if I did a Bricks test on this parsley, it'd probably be the best parsley that I, that, that I've seen a Bricks test on and that I've ever grown, like by far. So the parsley on this side and yeah. Oh, I want to show you guys this 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 shot too. I mean, this is the same side where I have the new worm castings, but like look at look at this inside here. Look at all these peppers like on this one plant here. I mean, this thing is like loaded, man. This is just pepper haven here. Wow, look at this plant, man. I counted it. Some of these plants have 12, 13, 14 peppers on them. Totally amazing. Yeah, so now I'm glad that I just finally shot this for you because I was waiting to like shoot this for you guys until I harvested them all because <laughs> now I could harvest them because now I don't have to show it on the video anymore. But what I attribute the uh, massive explosive growth and the higher yields and of course the good flavor with are a few things. So actually I'm going to go ahead and sit down and talk to you guys more about what I did to get these amazing yields and especially what I did specifically on this side or this half of the bed that really blew up my growth. So now I want to share with you guys some of the practices I did to achieve this amazing outcome, right? Basically, as you guys know that have been following me for a while, you know, I put very specific ingredients into my soil. I've been building this soil for many, many, many years now since I first put this garden in, which if you guys haven't seen, you could check back you know, when I put this garden in many, many, many years ago, I don't even remember how many years ago I stopped counting, <laughs> but you know, I uh, filled this originally with compost and rock dust, and then over the years would add different nutritional, you know, amendments to my soil. I dare not call them fertilizers because fertilizers is kind of like something that wears out over time, and everything that I've added, you know, uh, enriches and makes the soil fertility even better. So the rock dust for the trace minerals, I've added different kinds of worm castings over the years. I've used the John and Bob's products. Um, I've used uh, things like uh, biochar, things like uh, kelp meal, and uh, you know, a whole host of other things. Oh, of course, something really important too that uh, you know, I haven't put as much as I'd like on, but I did really enrich it this past year uh, between the change out of the seasons. I put on the uh, fungal dominated compost or a wood chip compost. And so yeah, that added a lot of fertility to my soil. I have, you know, check my past episodes for what exactly I do. But, you know, uh, this whole bed started off with all those things that I just mentioned on both sides. We got the plants planted when they're pretty young. Uh, you know, then I basically top dress with two different worm castings. Yes, that's right, worm castings. They're probably one of my favorite things to add to your garden because they're nature's fertilizer. This is not something man-made in a chemical factory like the miracle, 
you know, uh, crap fertilizer you could buy at your store. Um, you know, this is what nature would feed the plants naturally because of the earthworms. And yes, I have plenty of earthworms in my garden eating and digesting all the different organic matter in my soil, including all the compost that I add every year. So they're creating extra fertility there. But just to make sure I topped it off with uh, two different kinds of worm casting. So on this half of the bed up to this little peg here, we had the all new casting that I haven't ever used before. It's this stuff right here. This is the uh, OGS or Organic Solutions Premium Worm Castings. This is a CDFA uh, certified organic registered. It's a product of California. And uh, yeah, this is a premium worm casting. So don't confuse these premium worm castings with just standard worm castings, all right? And that's the new one I tried. That's where I got this explosive growth that you guys are looking at some of it right now. Just look at all the peppers. I mean, all you guys are just seeing is red. I don't know if it's really clear on the camera, but like I can look back in here, man. It just puts a smile on my face like, all the peppers. I mean, one of the reasons, because these peppers taste amazing. I could just eat peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers out of my garden. And that, that was my dinner, you know, a while back. Um, because they just tasted so good. You don't need dressing when you got good flavored food. And I know you guys that have grown your own tomatoes know this. But like, yes, you can have really sweet and delicious peppers that taste astronomically better than the store. And this is what I want for you guys, and this is why I make these videos to show you guys what I'm up to, what I'm doing, and how I get the specific results I get so that you guys could duplicate that if you want to. All right, so on the other half of the bed where, you know, the results were good, but they weren't, like, as good as this side, I used my favorite worm casting that I've been talking about for a long time. <laughs> this is the Worm Gold Plus worm castings, right? And this one actually has uh, kelp and rock dust inside there. And so this is the one I've been using for a long time. I even had George Hahn, the uh, inventor of the Worm Gold Plus worm castings on. If I remember, I'll put a link down below to his video. Uh, the reason why I like the Worm Gold Plus is because he says he has very high chitinase degraders and very high cellulase degraders, which basically the cellulase degraders basically allow the plants to convert more nutrients faster and then the chitinase degraders basically give your plants immunity against pests. And so that's like really his claim to fame on there. And of course, along with those are other nutrients. And then he also adds the rock dust and the kelp, which are two good things. But despite doing this, you know, I didn't get as a good yields on the back side of the bed as I did on the front side, all else being equal. So, you know, on these OGS, worm castings you know i don't exactly know what they're putting in there but i know they feed a wide variety of things they feed like i don't know i think soil humates and grains and um different things like uh, insect frass and all different kinds of things to create these worm castings right i haven't seen the specs or the data on this but you know when i do i'm expecting to see very high numbers and a very good quality casting you know, and yeah, I mean, of course, numbers are important on a piece of paper, but of course, what even speaks more than numbers on a piece of paper is just how well it's grown for me this year. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my secret this year. I mean, of course, doing all the things I normally do, but then, you know, you guys should probably get this stuff, the OGS worm castings, if you wanna, you know, increase your growth. You know, I mean, in some areas, I got more than 50% 50, 50 more peppers. Of course, in some areas where I did worm gold, the difference wasn't as dramatic. I did a couple other beds with the same uh, ratios and splits. And I mean, sometimes the difference was only 25% more, but it generally always favored uh, the OGS castings that made higher yields. So especially if you're growing, you know, something like peppers that, you know, in the store lately, I've seen peppers for five dollars a pound for organic sometimes i see them as high as 9.99 a pound for organic peppers that's why i grow these instead of tomatoes because generally they're more expensive but now let's maximize the yield you know 12 peppers per plant planted every 11 to 12 inches that's amazing right that's a lot of food you're probably thinking john how are you going to eat all that food how are you going to eat all those peppers well i juice peppers so me and my girlfriend we love to juice peppers we'll juice enough peppers to make 32 ounces of juice for us each and then we'll turn that into a basically a soup base 
for us by blending in some nuts and some seeds and adding in chopped up lettuces and other vegetables and okra and cucumbers and spiralizing some zucchini and even putting some seaweed and, and some miso and natto in there. It's kind of like a udon style soup, man, but made with fresh peppers, you know, so it's super high in vitamin C, super high antioxidant. Other ways I'll use them is just eat them straight. When they taste this good, it's easy to eat them straight, dip them into guacamole, make a hummus uh, dip or some other kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, dip or spread to put on it and then just eat it. Super delicious. And then of course, if I have extra, uh, then I uh, dehydrate them. So I dehydrate them and then I actually add those later on in the year when I don't have my peppers to like the soup bases when I'm buying peppers from the store because I they're gonna be out of season pretty soon. To, to add back some extra flavor and use it as a thickener and to yeah, just make it healthier for me. So yeah, that's how I use them on peppers if you're wondering. So yeah, I mean, definitely I had a good time this uh, season. I'm looking forward to planting out uh, pretty soon after I uh, pull all the right peppers and then it will get replanted for the winter time. So if you guys wanna know where to get the OGS castings, let's see, their contact information is Organic Solutions LLC, they're at 805-384-9020, and it's organicsolutions.com. Uh, if you wanna get the cheapest price in the Organic Solutions um, worm castings delivered to you guys, wanna visit my friend uh, Josh at boogiebrew.net slash GYG. Actually, he's where I got <laughs> these castings that I put on my garden, so you know you're getting good stuff, you get it from Josh. And he's where I got the Worm Gold Plus. Right, so he has both these. I guess the best deal is if you get a box half and half of each, but if it was me, I'd probably just get the full box of the OGS. Now I'm not gonna say these are like cheap castings, right? I guess if you get the Worm Gold Plus and this box, it's maybe around a dollar a pound, but if you're getting just these alone, the OGS castings, it's gonna be more expensive, but still, you know, I guess the big part of it is uh, the shipping costs. If you live locally, like in Southern Cal, some Whole Foods stores actually even sell this stuff here. I don't mean, it might be more expensive at Whole Foods than order from Josh, actually. <laughs> or uh, call OGS or in Camarillo or Camarillo, whatever, uh, California. Yeah, go to them directly. So, yeah, that's definitely good worm castings, definitely good results. Yeah, I just top dressed actually each plant and the area around the plant after they were all planted. So, I didn't even like dig it in optimally. I like to actually dig it in with the soil. And then maybe even top dress later, because as you guys could see, the results uh, results speak for themselves. Very impressive. So yeah, especially if you're growing uh, different herbs, fruits, some medicinal herbs, whatever. Use some of this stuff, man. Increase your yield, bump your yields. You know, if you're a farmer, you're gonna bump your profits. And if you're a home gardener, you're just gonna be eating more food out of your garden than out of the grocery store. And that's what I want for each and every one of you. We, we need to move away from this system where we're where we're slaves to the system, where we are consumers to the system, where we keep buying and buying and more crap and more crap, right? We want to become producers, and there's little tricks you could do to produce more and uh, consume less. Because when you produce high quality fruits and vegetables, you need to eat less of them to get the same nutrition. So if you guys enjoy this episode and want me to visit OGS and do an in-depth video on how they make their stuff, give me a thumbs up. If I get a thousand thumbs ups on this video, I'm gonna go down to OGS myself personally, give you guys a personal tour. We're gonna interview the owners and learn all about the OGS worm castings. You know, you know the worm, a worm casting is only as good as what they're feeding the worms, and I've used a lot of worm castings over the years especially like the what are EB stone worm castings like those were pretty crappy like anyways there's all different kinds of worm casting and just because it's worm casting doesn't automatically make it good you want to ask what are they feeding the worms you want, we want to remember quality over quantity very important in a lot of things in life especially things you do in the bedroom so <laughs> anyways give me a thumbs up if you want me to visit OGS also be sure to check my past episodes my past episodes are wealth of knowledge I have over 1200 episodes at this time teach you guys all aspects on how to grow your own food at home and also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes I've coming out of every three to four days you never know where I'm gonna show up or what you'll be learning and how your life will be enriched due to watching one of my videos so uh, in any case I gotta Get harvesting some peppers now. <laughs> Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm coming at you once again from the 2016 Heirloom Expo taking place here in Santa Rosa, California. They're going to do 